fellas, it's Raptor Jesus here with a video about how to make your first campaign map. I'm using this program called Worldographer, but you could use any blank piece of hex paper. This just looks really fancy. It's like a good for making first edition style maps, which I really like the simplicity of it. So the first thing I always add is a river. Uh, I really like rivers. I like waterways and players having boats and stuff. So I always start at kind of an angle from corner to corner. So I think it like splits the map up real nice, personally. Next thing I'll add is in the middle, uh, I'll add a road. Excuse me while I fiddle around with my settings here. So I'll add the road kind of like near the middle of the map and I'll have it cross the river. Oh yeah. I forgot to change the width on this thing. <laughs> uh, the hexes, by the way, I use, uh, I'm using six mile hexes in my example. Um, Rural Cyclopedia recommends eight mile hex, which really throws me off because I've used six mile hexes for so long. And I necessarily don't like the eight mile hex that they suggest. I think it's more of a preference thing. I like the six mile hex because in the middle of the hex, uh, you know, that's three miles. So that's how long it takes your average human to, it takes about an hour to walk that much for your average guy. It depends on how fit you are. Uh, me personally, I, I'm a little bit under the average. I'm trying to work towards that D&D &D adventurer uh, average. So in the middle of your map, uh, you add your starting town. I'm going to use this little hamlet uh, symbol. I like having nice little smaller, smallish areas for players to start in. Then about three hexes from that, so about like half of a day's travel, you want to put your dungeon. Uh, this means like you, after your typical session of dungeon exploring, you know, it takes about half a, a full day of travel to get there. Uh, roughly about like a full two days or one day there and one day back, you want to put your castle, your Lord's castle. And this guy is always going to be like, for me anyway, he's always going to be like your retired adventurer that runs things. Um, and you want to make them a little bit advanced in age. So when your players start getting around like uh, being able to run a domain, so like around ninth level, uh, name level is, is what my old DM used to call it. That way when your your players get to that point, like your, your Lord could, you could have them die off of natural causes or get killed by your dark horde, you know, your army of orcs and goblins and trolls and what have you. They're always led by the dark lord. You always want to have uh, someone that can rein all of these monstrous humanoids in. Probably a, a, what used to be called like a black guard, your evil fighter. Somewhat cowardly that doesn't really want to have an upfront battle with the... Uh, the strong party that your players probably will be. And as you can see, I added a, a kind of a forest branching off this town and a, a mountain range that the dungeon's in, which is also a good barrier to, to put, you know. So this is like your enclosed valley. I actually got this idea for my very first real DM. My first DM was just me and my buddies trying to figure out how to use 
BX with AD&D 2nd Edition, AD&D 1st Edition, and just a mishmash of systems. We had no idea what we were doing, but my first real DM, we played 2nd uh, Edition. And he was really good. He was actually our town's marshal. Because uh, where I'm from, we still have marshals and stuff like that. You know, real Wild West out here. But he was a, he had so much stuff, and I think he informed a lot of how, like, I play and see RPGs was from him. We didn't just play D&D. We would play GURPS, we played Traveler, we played a little bit of Gamma World, we played even Boot Hill, but only very briefly. That was more of, like, if all the players didn't show up, we'd bust out our Boot, boot Hill characters and get up some shenanigans. You want to try to encase your, your valley uh, with natural barriers, which kind of hems things in and, you know, mountainous areas are always have always a little bit tougher monsters. So your players kind of know like that, those peaks are where the giants and stuff are and rocks and...